Back to our top story, former Vice President Joe Biden selecting Kamala Harris as his vice presidential pick. Joining us now is political expert Dr. Rafe Sonnenshine. He is the executive director of the Pat Brown Institute for Public Affairs at CSU Los Angeles. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us today. And this is uh, really yeah, a fascinating development. And we really <laughs> would love to hear what you think about this. Joe Biden took his time in deciding on Kamala Harris as his running mate. What do you think made him ultimately select her over some of the other names that we have heard floating around? Well, Kamala Harris was pretty much the number one choice from beginning to end. Uh, and other people rose and fell, but she was always either number one or number two the whole time. I think he felt that he has, she had the most experience at the national level. She's run for president, even though she didn't win in the primary. She's got that experience. Uh, and she's got star quality. And she uh, is extremely effective campaigner. Although it didn't work for her in the primaries, it doesn't mean it won't help for her now. And it recognizes some core constituencies of the Democratic Party, both California and African-American women and Asian-Americans and Asian-American women. So uh, I think it's a fairly electrifying choice, uh, but it doesn't surprise a lot of people in politics that this was his choice. Hmm. Well, late today, the White House, uh, President Trump pointed out that Kamala Harris did not do as well as she'd hoped for in the primary election. So if her message didn't resonate with voters then, will it now? Well, we don't know that it didn't resonate because the nomination was Joe Biden's to lose. He was the presumptive nominee all along. She's following the Joe Biden path. He was not a successful candidate for president and found his voice as a terrific candidate for vice president with Barack Obama. And through that, developed what he needed to be a successful candidate here. Really, uh, the history is that sometimes you can find your way as, as George Bush Sr. did. Uh, wasn't very successful running for president, but did very well as VP and then became president. So I don't think there's anything to President Trump's comments. He's essentially doing what we call trolling, uh, trying to kind of throw some stuff out there. But I don't think it's going to make much difference. Right. Well, this is a historic choice. As you mentioned, she is the first African-American woman chosen as a major party vice presidential candidate. And she's the first Asian-American as well. So what does that mean, in your opinion, about where this country is right now from a political standpoint? I think it says something about where the Democratic Party is. The Democratic Party always takes a long time to recognize its most loyal supporters. And two examples are California, which it's treated as an ATM machine for, for decades for Democratic campaigns, and African-American women who are without question the strongest, most active, most energetic dialed up group of democratic supporters in the country and often find themselves being told this isn't the right year. Well, this is now the right year. So I think it's going to resonate very strongly that their support and loyalty to the Democratic Party is now being recognized. Well, Senator Harris famously sparred with Biden in the primary debate. So could this be an issue in the general election? Oh, you know, everybody made a big deal out of that. I, I don't know why people worry about this. Every president and vice president, when they have a tough choice to make, John Kennedy picked Lyndon Johnson and they fought like extremely hard in 1960. Ronald Reagan fought with George Bush. This happens all the time. By the standards of these things, these were pretty mild fights. Uh, I'd also say this notion that the senator is too ambitious strikes me as a little bit like discovering that there's gambling in the casino. <laughs> uh, politics is essentially a business of ambition and it seems that only women are not allowed to have the main quality that drives politics, which is the drive to succeed politically. So there's just going to be a lot of glass ceilings broken. And also a lot will be put on her where people will pay attention to things as a woman candidate that really shouldn't be paid attention to it or president and vice president. And I think all of us, including people in the media, are going to have to watch that very carefully and make sure she gets a fair judgment like everybody else would. Right. This, this could be a rock yeah. next uh, two and a half to three months. Uh, Dr. Rafe Sonnenshine, thank you so much. It's been great talking to you about this. My pleasure. No doubt we'll have you back again. <laughs>